Welcome to Food for Thought. My name is Colleen Patrick Goudreau from Compassionate Cooks. I founded Compassionate Cooks to empower people, to make informed food choices, and to debunk myths about vegetarianism and animal rights. You can learn more about who we are and what we do by visiting our website, CompassionateCooks.com or JoyOfVeganBaking.com. Hi, everybody. Welcome to a very special episode of Food for Thought. It's our two-year anniversary, and it's kind of special that the anniversary episode will always fall right around my birthday, as does this one. The knowledge that this podcast is empowering people and saving animals is the best birthday present I could receive. When I first decided to do this podcast, I really had no idea what I was getting into, and I don't think I ever told you the story about how it even came about. So let me take you back to 2006. I know it may be hard to think back that far, but follow me here. It was two years ago in early 2006, and I had scheduled a conference call with two friends of mine, Mark Ariano and Darcel Walker. Mark and Darcel were part of the production team for my cooking DVD. Mark was the director and Darcel was the sound engineer. In fact, let me give them a quick plug because they're both incredible people and are good friends and are doing really fabulous work. Darcel's company is called Funky Tiki. It's funkytiki.com, F-U-N-K-Y-T-I-K. K-I, funkytiki.com, and he does live professional recording of the arts, and he's just the best around. Mark and his wife, Cherie Larsh Ariano, founded and operate Conscious Creative, and together they do graphic and web design, photography, Cherie's an incredible photographer, and she's also a good friend, and she designed everything related to my DVD, by the way. She did all the design work, and they also do video services. Mark is also a filmmaker, so they're just really fabulous, eclectic, talented people. And Conscious Creative is a green company. Everything they do reflects environmental values, and both Funky Tiki and Conscious Creative are vegan-owned. So there's that. So I had called this meeting with Mark and Darcel because I wanted to talk to them about potentially doing web-based video cooking demonstrations. I just wanted to talk to them about what that would entail. And I don't remember how it came up, but Mark said something like, have you ever considered doing a podcast? And I was like, okay, so I kind of know what a podcast is, but can you explain it to me really slowly? And he did. And I was like, Okay, so, all right, so I'll consider doing a podcast, but what's it going to cost? What do I need to get started? You know, kind of the details about that. And they both jumped in. Darcel told me what I would need in terms of all of the audio equipment and software, et cetera. And so I was like, okay, I'll do a podcast. And I wrote my first episode on the protein myth, of course, because that's the number one question that vegans get asked, vegetarians do. And we went live on March 12th, 2006. Well, I mean, that was the first episode. I had no idea that it would become what it has become, but after talking to Mark and Darcel, I just knew that this was another way I could raise awareness and empower people. So I have to send a huge thank you to Mark and Darcel, wherever you are. Actually, I know exactly where they are, and I'll see them this weekend for my birthday. But I want to send them a huge thank you for being a catalyst for this podcast. It may have happened eventually, but it really happened because of them. So in honor of our anniversary, I am going to read listeners' letters so you can all experience what I experience every day in terms of hope. I want you to know how much hope there is out there. I want you to hear how many people are finding their voice and speaking their truth and reflecting their values and helping animals, all because of something they heard on this podcast, which means the world to me. For those of you who sponsor the podcast, I want you to know that you're supporting something that is literally changing lives, and you'll hear that in these amazing stories. And for those of you who are considering sponsoring the podcast, I want you to hear the same thing. Some of the people whose letters I read are sponsors, so you may hear from them again. And the variety of stories and the diversity of people listening is really incredible and something I'm very proud of. I want you to know also that though I may have shortened some emails, I have not changed any of the words at all. Each and every word is exactly as it was sent to me. And I just want you to know that I'm so proud of all of you. I'm so impressed and I'm very humbled. 
it was very difficult not to include every email I received from listeners. I do plan on having a similar show sometime, hopefully before the next anniversary. So if you don't hear your voice expressed here today, my intention is to make sure you're included in the next one. But you know how I feel anyway. I hopefully have had contact with you via email. So this episode will be a little longer than usual, so sit back and sip some tea and enjoy what is essentially a veritable love fest. The first letter is from a woman named Patty. She wrote, I was a typical meat eater for all of my life until my early 40s. I loved how meat tasted and the texture. Although I adore animals, I was raised to eat meat and didn't question it, like most Americans. My first exposure to not eating meat came from a roommate who was a member of PETA. He didn't speak his truth, though. So the only thing I learned from him was that you could make a delicious batch of beans without using ham or pork, which I had thought was impossible. Once he moved out, I forgot how he did it, so I went back to cooking beans with ham. Years later, I read a book that did speak the truth and opened my eyes wide open, Dominion, the Power of Man, the Suffering of Animals, and the Call to Mercy by Matthew Scully. What a shock. Each chapter focused on a different version of how humans are cruel and perverse to animals and the huge amount of suffering animals are experiencing every minute, every second, even now. Literally, it's a truth that is more horrible than any scary movie. As I read that book, I was stunned because I had no idea the extent of our cruelty, nor of the pain caused to animals from the meat production industry. Scully's call to vegetarianism spoke to me, and I began the path of vegetarianism immediately. However, it was hard. I have never been good at putting limits on myself. I love fast food, junk food, and I have always struggled with eating too much sugar and drinking too much caffeine. I once asked for unlimited bacon as a child for my birthday because my mom had always only allowed us two slices and I wanted eight or ten slices. I love bacon. How was I now going to not eat meat? I made great progress through many efforts, and I learned to make delicious meals, and so I became a part vegetarian. Not perfect, but I was 90% there. One of the most delightful side effects I've experienced is that a new world of food opened up to me. People think I'm crazy when I say that dropping meat from my diet has opened up more food choices, but it's true. I'm now an excellent tofu cook, I make great vegetable pot pies and stews and soups, and I make a fantastic veggie chili. I cook portobello mushrooms and chard and collard greens, and they're all so delicious. Needless to say, I never spoke my truth except to my husband, who is fantastic, a huge supporter, and now a vegetarian also. However, I was sure that I could never be vegan, since I still ate too much sugar, caffeine, and junk food, and love cheese. I'm sure that would have been the extent of my vegetarianism had I not found your podcast. Many of your words brings the book Dominion back to life and the horrors we humans bring upon animals, even those of us who claim to love them. I now see everything, and I mean everything, more clearly. I love your logic and your delivery, and I love your ability to be convincing in such a logical way. And you are right. Not eating animals or their products is a joyful lifestyle of abundance, not one of restrictions. As I head down the path of veganism in 2008, I am excited as I have never been before. I am joyful, and I look forward to a life of abundance while speaking my truth in a pleasant, positive way. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Your work is the greatest. The next letter is from Katie. I'm writing to thank you. I got an iPod for Christmas and found your podcast as I browsed through the health section of iTunes. All I can say is I'm now awake. Several years ago, I read Diet for a New America and was so moved. I tried vegetarianism, still eating cheese and milk, and I was not awake. I also had no support whatsoever. Now I'm 36 and hopefully, definitely, more mature and stronger to stand by my beliefs. I didn't make the full connection and become fully aware until I found your podcast. I just now tried to watch a James Cromwell investigative piece on the pigs in some factory and absolutely could not finish watching it. I'm so sad and mad at the same time. Like you, I loved little critters and animals growing up. Why did it take so long in my adult life to really make the connection that all animals are to be cherished? I have always loved cows. They are my favorite as are pigs, but yet I still ate them. I am somewhat mad at myself for that. Anyway, you are doing such a great thing. Your talent and beauty have impacted my life in so, so many ways. I cannot express how I feel now that I have woken up, but it's a good, good feeling. 
This letter is from Laura. I want to thank you sincerely for the podcast. I have been a vegetarian for nearly four years now, and like virtually every other vegetarian, I have been questioned, teased, and debated with about my diet, especially since moving to Germany, where people are more comfortable with beginning solid discussions than people in the U.S. It has become even more important for me to be able to explain my dietary choice to others instead of merely being satisfied with it myself. Since listening to your podcast, I've been able to explain the logic and benefits of vegetarianism so that my German friends at least have a glimpse into the beauty of vegetarianism. The podcast has also encouraged me to express my beliefs as strongly as I believe in them, which I believe is terribly important in this day and age, where it is very easy to simply get lost in the current. This letter is from Samantha. I'm a junior in high school and became a vegetarian around a year and a half ago. I thought I was doing good by not eating any meat, chicken, etc. But after listening to your amazing podcast, my entire viewpoint and outlook on eating and on life changed. I am now a full vegan and love it beyond belief. I have a huge sense of worth and hope to help all animals now and in the future. I have always been a very healthy eater, but never fully realized what gratification being a vegan provides. I love all animals, and I've been volunteering at a dog rescue for six months, walking dogs, but more importantly, giving them all the love and attention I can to make their lives a little better. I would like to be involved with other organizations that help animals, and I'm also trying to organize a vegan bake, bake sale at my school where all the profit would go to animal supporting foundations. Thank you so much for exposing the truth about animal treatment and for inspiring me to become vegan. Thanks for motivating, inspiring, and caring. This is from Claire. I recently started listening to your podcast as I just got an iPod for Christmas. I have been madly downloading your previous episodes trying to catch up and I love it. I've also subscribed to the podcast. I heard that's important. I became vegetarian two and a half years ago after being a part-time vegetarian for a year before that. I became vegetarian primarily because of the health benefits, but since that time I am growing in my understanding and passion for the way it benefits the environment and the animals. I also try to be vegan, and your podcast is helping me move in that direction. I made my husband listen to one of your podcasts. I told him to listen for five minutes, and if he wanted to turn it off after that, he could, but he listened to the whole thing and told me it totally inspired him. Awesome. I think your podcast is so relevant, interesting, helpful, insightful, and funny. Thanks for your wisdom and your time. It's appreciated. This is from Noel. I've always admired vegetarians, and while I ate very little red meat, I never thought I would become vegetarian, let alone vegan. I thought vegetarianism was morally superior, but not a moral necessity, because I thought meat eating was natural for humans, and I thought veganism was just plain insanity. For a long time, I have made sure to cook at least one or two vegetarian dinners for our family a week. Beginning in 2008, I decided to increase it to 50% and found your podcast in the hopes of adding some meals to my collection. Little did I know. Your words have changed my life and my perception of the world around me. I was even able to go out of town over the weekend and maintain my veganism. In your most recent episode, you talked about vegans seeing their pets and other animals differently. That has been the case for me, too. And my husband, who's been wanting to get a second dog for about three years now, sensed that in me and asked, again, if I'd reconsider. So we came back into town early and went to the local animal shelter and rescued a sweet little pup. I would never have done that before. I feel like your words and the facts you have shared with me have saved my life. For sure, they have saved the thousands of animals I would have been eating over the next 40 or 50 years. Thank you for everything you do. This is from Sparrow. First, I wanted to say how moving your podcast is. I went vegan for health reasons, Dr. Barnard's program for reversing diabetes from PCRM, but listening to your podcast has expanded my reasons for remaining on a vegan diet and led me to question what I am supporting when I buy leather shoes. I especially appreciate that I always feel embraced by your podcasts, never condemned or judged. I do believe that this is an attitude that will bring more people to veganism, as I have been turned off in the past by others with harsh presentations, but you bring me face to face with my ethics in a way that is not off-putting. Thank you so much for all you do for the animals, human and non-human. This is from Ken. I've been vegetarian for 30 years and vegan for five. I drive up and down the main coast for a living and I listen to your podcast quite often. With your last one playing, I could hardly stay on the road because of my one, tears of sadness, and two, tears of joy from your stories and facts regarding the animal industry. 
I think of you as our animal spokesperson. When I listen to your podcast, I can feel and hear your compassion. It hasn't gone unnoticed. Thank you for the animals and me. This is from Susan. I have been a subscriber to your podcast for the past few months. And first off, just wanted to say thank you for such a great production. It is just so great that you put together all of this vegan, vegetarian lifestyle information and have presented it in a thoughtful and intelligent way. It's funny, I try to present the same information to my friends and family on a daily basis, but I'm always frustrated with the results. It's nice to hear someone is reaching a larger audience. I have been a vegetarian since I was about 13 years old. I'm 25 now. I at first did it as a way to be overall more healthful and because I seriously did not like the taste of meat. As I have grown up and matured, that decision has really defined who I am today. It's not just about dietary restrictions. It is truly a way of life and I have been gradually transitioning to vegan, the vegan lifestyle as well. It is hard dealing with all of the public scrutiny, answering the same questions over and over. Sometimes I feel like I'm crazy or something. I just have been trying to do my best to inform these people and just stick to my morals. It just amazes and astonishes me how little the general public knows about such nutrition topics. Okay, I realize I've gone on enough about this, so I will just conclude with another big thank you and keep up the great work. This is from Sharon. Thank you for such a wonderful podcast. You approach veganism in an eloquent, intelligent manner and have given me lots of issues to contemplate. I was an ovo-lacto-vegetarian for 26 years, only recently making the switch to a pure vegan diet. Had I listened to your podcast sooner, I would have made the change much, much earlier. This is from Kate. I just wanted to add to the well-deserved thanks that you're getting from many converted vegetarians and omni-eaters, as well as those vegans who just need support. I've been a vegetarian since I was 15 years old and have gone for several months as a vegan in the past. These last few months, I yet again started cutting out all animal products, but wasn't able to truly go 100% until discovering your podcast. You get right to the point and provide so much helpful information and encouragement. Thanks so much. Keep up the great work. This is from Hannah. I just wanted to write to say that I deeply appreciate and admire the work you are doing at Compassionate Cooks. I'm from Australia and had been vegetarian for six years. Due to some health problems, I was strongly advised to introduce animal products back into my diet. I did comply to the suggestion because I did not know what else to do. About eight months into the routine, I decided that I just couldn't go through with it. I went back to vegetarianism and have since been feeling so much better physically and mentally. Since discovering your inspiring podcast, I have decided to adopt a vegan diet. I've tried to go vegan before, but I've always found it really restrictive. Looking at the fantastic ideas on your website and your podcast have made me realize that I have thousands of incredible options to choose from and that being vegan does not have to be restrictive. My transition into veganism is a constant learning process. Every day I discover a new way in which I can minimize harm to animals via food choices. Since this change, I know that I am nourishing my heart and soul every day. I also came to realize that when I was vegetarian, I was making some very poor food choices. Being veg does not always equal health. I now understand how I became unwell and have completely revised my diet to one of high nutrition with sufficient zinc and iron. I'm inspired to know that the welfare of animals is something which more and more people are prioritizing. I hope I can be a voice for animals and do everything I can to help them live lives of joy and longevity. This is from Nicole. Listening to you has done so much for me. I feel stronger about my beliefs as a vegan. I have deeper insights into vegan issues. I'm healthier in mind, body, and spirit, and I'm proud and confident about my decisions. You've also inspired me to focus more of my life on promoting veganism and awareness about animal issues. I am simply a better person because of your efforts, and I thank you. This is from Julie. I started listening to your podcast because my boyfriend found it just after I decided to become vegan and he thought it would be helpful and informative for both of us. He loves my vegan cooking and I think he's getting close to getting off eggs for breakfast, his last consistent non-vegan habit, but he's not vegetarian. Listening to your podcast together 
though, has brought him from eating meat, fish, eggs, and cheese nearly every day to eating almost no meat or fish and eggs and cheese much less than before. It's a good start, and my sponsorship is a small way of saying thank you. You have helped both of us be more informed about our choices, and I appreciate what you're doing for all listeners. Also, I wanted to thank you especially for the Thanksgiving Turkey podcast. Before I heard it, I didn't ever want to engage in explanations about vegetarianism or veganism, and it was always my policy policy that this was my choice and that I wouldn't interfere with others' rights to live as they choose. After hearing that podcast, though, I thought about how I would feel if others chose to eat one of my cats, and I would be devastated. I finally came to see that all animals have the same worth that we're used to recognizing in the animals in our homes. It just so happens that we have been personally acquainted with those particular animals, and not with the others that are being killed for human consumption. I would speak loudly and clearly if someone wanted to torture my cat, steal her young, or kill my sweet friend for meat. Now I see the connection, and will be just as vocal when I hear others advocating using other animals for those purposes. You opened my eyes. Thank you. This is from Jamie. I love your podcast, which is why I am writing. I've been lacto-ovo for a little over a year now, and with the recent subscription to your wise and very well-thought-out program, I'm slowly turning into a vegan, one podcast at a time. Keep up the good work. Thanks for everything you're doing to spread awareness and love. Humanity needs more of you around. This is from Heather. I'm not sure how I found your podcast. I think through a search for vegetarian on iTunes, but in any case, finding it changed my life. I just felt I had to write to you and tell you what an impact you've made on me. I've listened to all of your podcasts and love them all. I'm 24 and I've been vegetarian since I was 11. My mom has always taught me to be compassionate and kind, especially when it comes to animals. When I was little, I read her animal rights books and was instantly sure I would never eat meat again, and I haven't. It has always been a gigantic part of my personality and something I hold very dear. However, half of me was asleep. I would buy free-range eggs and ate the eggs from our chickens. My family has a small farm. I gave no thought to eating anything, as long as there was no meat in it. I was a member of animal rights organizations and an impassioned supporter of non-human animals, but I was causing great suffering in my daily choices. I had thought about being vegan before, but never very seriously. Listening to your podcast has roused me and truly made me look inward. I realized I was not living my truth. Like you said in a podcast, it was difficult to look at myself and see that I wasn't making the best choices I could for other living beings. I have become vegan, and I truly feel like a new person. I want to thank you for opening my eyes and want you to know how important it is to me. Through your encouragement and wisdom, you have made my life better and, of course, made so many animals' lives better. I wanted to let you know that I admire so much what you're doing, and you're a real role model for me. I've been searching for what I want to do with my life for years, and I've always wanted to work with and for animals. I love to cook, I love food and nutrition, and I love to learn. I think what you do is amazing, and you are an inspiration. This is from Erin. I just wanted to add my voice to the others saying thank you for your podcast and for all your work. I have been a vegetarian my whole life, 29 years, and I had wanted to become vegan for many years, but I didn't think I had the fortitude to do so. I had made some changes, like dressing vegan and baking vegan at home, but never thought I'd be able to change my diet completely. After listening to your podcast, I realized that what had been holding me back was the fear of how other people in my life would react and that I could overcome that. Also, it really made a difference to me that you put veganism in a positive context and show that it does not have to be a lifestyle of privation, but rather opens up a whole new world of possibility. I think that is one of the reasons that you speak so profoundly to so many people. Anyway, thank you again for your work and for making me realize that I really did have the strength to live in reflection of my values. This is from Emily. I wanted to tell you how much I love your podcast and your website. I've been a lacto-ovo vegetarian for years, five, six, and have been a wannabe vegan for about half of that time. I'm a little ashamed to admit that while I was always intrigued, I was too lazy to go completely vegan, and now I've decided that I'm not going to be lazy anymore. I brought out some of my dusty vegan cookbooks and have made lots of yummy things in the past few months, and my toddler is eating right along with me. I love all your podcasts and always look forward to the new ones. You are doing fantastic work, and I'm so glad to have access to it. Thank you for all the inspiration and great ideas. 
This is from Stephanie. I would also like to thank you for such a great podcast. I gave up red meat about a year ago and felt falsely better about myself for trying to change a bit of the world. After listening to just a few of your podcasts and a lot of crying, I have realized that I'm just as greedy as everyone else and I haven't actually changed a thing. Now I'm just as responsible for more chickens being killed. It has forced me to take a look at my beliefs and why I do what I do. So again, thank you. I can't wait for your next podcast. This is from Amanda. I don't know how to thank you for everything you've done for me and other vegans across the country. Your podcasts are utterly inspiring, to say the least. After listening to an episode, I always feel refreshed and ready to take on the world. Well, maybe not the whole world, but at least my nearby surroundings. Being vegan is no simple task, especially in Midland, Texas, where vegans are about as common as the flesh-eating plague. Upon making my transition from lacto-ovo vegetarianism to veganism, I had no idea how difficult and taxing people could be regarding my lifestyle choice. But your words of wisdom and reassurance empower me to do all that I can to further the awareness of compassionate living. I'm leaving for college in a few months, and before hearing your podcast, I planned on not going vegan until graduating so I wouldn't have to deal with all of the trouble of eating vegan. You have inspired me to contact the head of the food services and head chef at my future college to alert them of my moral and religious views against the exploitation of animals as a food source and urge them to make vegan choices available for the students. I have made a packet of information, a great deal of it coming from the resources section on your Compassionate Cooks website, along with recipes and meal suggestions for the food services staff to read and consider. I just had to let you know and say thank you for giving me the inspiration and information to spread veganism everywhere I can. This is from Veronica. I wanted to say thank you for your podcast. I had some interest in becoming a vegetarian and was looking for information about diet, supplements, and where do vegetarians get their protein from. I came across your podcast at the perfect time. I wouldn't call myself a big meat eater to begin with, but I did serve it to my family several times a day. I found myself cutting my portions in half, but more because I just wasn't enjoying the taste of it anymore. I've always had issues with eating meat from a bone, large hunks of meat, seeing meat with blood, seeing vein holes in beef, etc. I think that people are very disconnected from where meat actually comes from. I was. I've recently been diagnosed with chronic gastritis, and I have gallstones to boot. I will be having my gallbladder removed this May. My biggest concern with this was that I have just turned 28 years old and I'm in pretty good shape. How could I possibly be unhealthy? So along came your podcast. Yeah, I was interested in the dietary info more than the animal rights info at first, but after listening to all of the available podcasts in two days, I was quickly getting on board with you. Hearing what really goes on behind the scenes has really hit a tender spot with me. I can't believe I didn't see it before. I live in a very, very small town where we are surrounded by farms and staple meals of meat and potatoes. I remember once being served Betsy on a bun at a friend's house. I was horrified to find out that I was eating the animal that I had made friends with weeks before. After that, I started eating a lot less red meat, but I was still disconnected from where meat comes from. Since listening to your podcast, your first podcast two weeks ago, I have not touched an ounce of meat and intend on keeping it that way. Can it happen overnight? Yes. I'm completely connected now. My husband is with me on changing to a vegetarian lifestyle, so I'm supported by my family. I think that vegan will take a little more practice, but eventually I will get there. So far, it's been easier than I thought. I've added some new flavors to my meals already and can't wait to add more. Who could possibly go hungry eating a vegetarian diet? I feel light, free, empowered, clean, and healthy, and so conscious of what goes in my mouth. Thank you, Colleen. I admire your work. Thank you for opening people's eyes, my eyes. Thank you for offering such great and powerful information. I am armed with the knowledge to stand by my ground on my decision. This is from Dot. Colleen, my 19-year-old college sophomore daughter decided to become vegetarian about a year ago, then started listening to your show and became vegan. She encouraged me to listen to you, as I had been vegetarian for over 10 years, but about two years ago had started eating meat per order from my doctor because I had become very anemic. After listening to a few of your shows, I stopped eating meat. 
Not only have I learned a tremendous amount about healthy eating and getting all of our vitamins and minerals through vegetarian eating, I'm now promoting vegetarianism to anyone who will listen. Please continue your research and dedication to educate people. The animals who are so innocent and completely dependent on us deserve it. Thank you so much for all you do. This is from Carrie. Well, Colleen, you really opened my eyes. Almost a year ago, I decided to change my Omni family to a vegetarian diet because I was hearing over and over again how terrible factory farming is for the environment. Since we'd made a number of major changes in our lives in an effort to protect the earth for our children, becoming vegetarian just seemed like the next step for us. Of course, as I've heard you say time and time again in your podcast, I was inundated with questions about why I chose a vegetarian lifestyle. So in an effort to have well-educated and factual answers, I started doing my research, finding everything I could about how bad factory farming was for the environment. And of course, while doing that research, I started finding all of the information about animal welfare as well. I'm embarrassed to say that for 30 years, I've been fooling myself. I came across a reference to your podcast in a vegan food blog I read. I started listening, and I've been hooked ever since. Your podcast has been a catalyst in helping me eliminate all animal products from the diet of my family. It's a process, and we aren't quite there yet, but I'm happy to say that over the past few weeks, we've had more days consuming no animal products than we have had consuming them. I have found myself becoming a voice not only for the environment, but for the animals as well. I hear the compassion in your voice, and I can't help but be moved. So thank you, Colleen. Thank you for the information you have provided. Thank you for the calm, non-preachy, and non-judgmental way you have delivered that information. And most of all, thank you for opening my eyes. I and the animals are forever grateful. This is from Tracy. Okay, I'm finally writing to you. I had been putting it off because I was intimidated by all the eloquent sounding letters you read on your podcast, but I'm diving in right now to tell you how wonderful I think you are. I listen to at least one of your podcasts almost every day. I only discovered you about a month ago when I was shopping for a belated birthday present for my niece. She's two and loves watching cooking shows. So I decided to get her a cooking DVD, and since I became vegetarian last November, I thought a vegetarian DVD would be a good idea. That's how I discovered your website. I ordered the DVD, and that was that. But then I got an email advertising the Animal Rights Convention in Washington, D.C., and I noticed you were going to speak there. And now you are my vegan guru. <laughs> Seriously, if someone asks what I'm doing, I say I'm listening to my vegan guru. Through listening to your podcast, I decided to transition to veganism. I used to hate to cook and therefore very, very rarely did until a couple of months ago. And now I love cooking. I find chopping vegetables therapeutic. I love combining assorted ingredients and discovering how they are going to taste together. I love listening to your podcast and learning new things every day. I rue the day when I'll have listened to all your podcasts and have to wait for the newest one to come out. This is from Matthew. Hello, my name is Matthew, and I just recently became vegan after listening to all of your podcasts. I'm 27, and just a few months ago received a heart transplant due to heart failure. I was researching different diets to find out which would be the best for my health. I thought maybe a vegetarian diet would help me. Not only did I discover it was good for my health, after listening to your podcast, I was also shocked by how cruel animals are treated and how eating dairy and eggs contributed to the torture of those poor animals. Two weeks now, and I'm dairy and meat-free. I hope to keep it that way. Now I'm discovering small things in my life that I need to change. I have a leather wallet, leather jacket, and cologne, which I will phase out of my life. Please keep up the great work on the podcast, and I will be listening to each and every one of them as they come out. This is from Morgan. I just wanted to thank you for the episode you made on teen vegetarians and vegans. I'm 17 years old, and until about one and a half months ago, I had always ate meat and dairy products with no problem because I was told it was healthy and there was no other alternative. But I soon began to find meat hard to enjoy for no particular reason. I'd always been curious about veganism and started to research it, and in doing so, I found your podcast, so I started listening just out of curiosity. Now I find myself with an overwhelming compassion for veganism and animal rights, thanks to you. 
It's hard for me to find support, especially in my own family. I'm finding it hard to bring up the moral reasons when people ask me why. But when I hear you talk about how important it is to speak your truth, it only gives me encouragement. Thank you so much for all you do for the teen vegans out there. I really appreciate the fact that you acknowledged us. You inspire me to no end. This is from Claudia. I am 14 and a long time vegetarian. I have been a vegetarian as long as I can remember, even though everyone in my family eats meat and has never put any thought into vegetarianism. I quit eating meat when I was very little, age four or five, and I haven't touched it since. As you can imagine, I have never received support for my decision and still don't. Mom and dad never ever cook vegetarian meals and tell me if I don't like it, I can make my own dinner even when I was very little, so I just ate the only thing I could make when I couldn't eat what was available, toast. But thanks to my parents' negligence to accept my firm decision, I have become a great cook, which resulted in me finding your terrific podcast. I was actually considering eating meat again, although I abhor the stuff and find it morally repugnant just to stop the baggage that came with being different. I was just so tired of being questioned endlessly by someone who didn't want to hear my answers. Being a generally reserved person didn't help, and moving all over the globe didn't either, me having to make new friends every year or so. But finding your podcast seemed to give me a voice and a reason to stay who I really am and always have been. I don't feel so alone now, and I find that there are other people out there like me. You've inspired me to go vegan, and I'm two weeks strong since I first started. Also, I've convinced my 13-year-old sister to take up vegetarianism, and she's been telling me how it feels. I never have eaten steak or anything in my life, and she has. Now she tells me how when she smells meat cooking, she feels disgusted rather than hungry, and swears also that her sense of taste and smell have sharpened regarding meat. She's getting her best friend to go vegetarian as well. I wanted to let you know how your work has changed me. You've inspired me to show my parents why I am the way I am, and it has helped to win them over, if just a little. I am now allowed to drink soy milk and have access to a lot of vegetarian products I wasn't allowed to before. Thank you for all that you've done, and I hope you keep it up. This is from Alyssa. Hi, my name is Alyssa and I'm 16 years old. I'm an avid listener to your podcast. I listened to one and I had to download the rest. I have just become vegetarian a little over a month ago. Before now, I have never been able to really stand up for the things I believe in for a long period of time. Becoming vegetarian for me was the best thing I could have ever done, even though my parents may not agree. I know there is someone else out there that does. I want to say thanks because of you and your podcast. I am able to make it through the rough times, whether it concerns my parents or life in general. You are a huge inspiration and role model for me with all you have done with animal rights and making vegetarianism and veganism well-known to the public. Thanks so much. This is from Becca. I've been listening to your podcast for about four months now, and it has made a huge difference in my life. I was once a meat eater and then began researching vegetarianism simply out of curiosity. What I heard shocked and horrified me. I have now adopted a vegetarian lifestyle and have come out to my family and friends. My family isn't fully supportive, and I am still forced to eat whatever my mother cooks, but they are slowly becoming more accepting and understanding. As soon as I graduate high school and enter a university, I intend on becoming vegan. I'm now seeing that the world we live in is far more bloody and senseless than I originally believed. I live in Erie County, home of the largest county fair in the nation, which I attended a few years ago. The livestock building horrified me. I was extremely uncomfortable at the display of the world's largest steer and at the sign proclaiming 10,000 hamburgers on the hoof. My disgust grew when upon seeing the sheep area, I noticed a large diagram of a sheep complete with dotted lines and labels indicating how the poor animals would be mutilated once they have been massacred. All this from farms who claim to love their animals. I often feel as if I'm alone. The constant contact with people set on dismissing my beliefs and lifestyle make me feel like a silly, foolish little girl. Having your voice to tune into makes it so much easier. All I can say from the bottom of my heart is thank you so much, so much. This is from Millie. 
I've been doing a lot of crying lately, but it feels so wonderful. I can't even tell you. I had been a pseudo ovo lacto vegetarian and occasionally ate fish for about four years when I stumbled upon your podcast. I can now clearly remember the day years ago when I watched Meet Your Meat for the first time, throwing me into a tizzy of ravenous research. It was clear from the start that eliminating all animal products was most consistent with my newfound compassion, but it was just too drastic of a change for me at the time, so I stopped eating land animals that day and never looked back. But then I also kind of forgot to look forward. I got so comfortable in this diet that I eventually deluded myself back into being okay with continuing to eat dairy, eggs, and the occasional sea creature. Turns out that I did a good job of deluding myself, because although I enjoyed your podcast on tofu, the first one I heard, the next few episodes I listened to caused a very defensive, emotional reaction from within me. I wanted to keep my eggs and cheese. I even referred to you as the crazy vegan lady when talking about your podcast with my boyfriend. I'm sorry, you are now always referred to by your name, I promise. But despite my resistance, you planted a seed, and I started doing some more research. After watching Earthlings, through which I cried the entire time, I went immediately back to your podcast and devoured the entire library in one fell swoop. Even re-listening to the episodes that I had originally thought off-putting, delighted to see them in a new light. And after exhausting that resource, I turned to my local library and put a hold on every book I've heard you recommend. I've been eating vegan for a few weeks now, and it feels amazing. I'm still crying a little, but they are mostly tears of joy. Colleen, thank you. You are doing such a wonderful thing for all animals, human and non-human, particularly this animal who's typing this note. Your joyful, compassionate approach is just so inspiring. I've met my fair share of angry vegans, you know, and while I do think there is a lot to be angry about, I don't want anger to ever be the driving force in my life. So thank you for sharing with others the concept of the joyful vegan, and I will do my part to spread the word. This is from Marion. I am a new vegan thanks to you. I have dabbled for decades in vegetarianism, and when I discovered your podcast, it just all clicked loud and clear. I can't believe that I was not willing to look at the plight of animals and my ethics so squarely until now. Your words and your spirit are so powerful. You are a very gifted speaker and writer. You've made me proud and joyful to be vegan. 20 years ago, I tried veganism, but I was weighed down by anger and embarrassment about being different. Not to mention that there were not so many fantastic vegan products and recipes around. Thank you. I hope soon to reach out to others who were like I just was, a little lazy, a little distracted. I especially admire those of you activists who have stuck with the animals when it was harder to do so. It's still hard, I'm sure, but it does seem to be a growing movement, which helps to fuel our hope. This is from Jeff. I am a veterinarian, and just last night I listened to the episode about what to feed your cats and dogs and about your cat's fiber sarcoma. I really respect what you had to say and completely agree. I appreciate your educated opinion because there's a lot of misleading information out there today. I think your opinions about dog and cat diets were right on. I also hope that people will listen to what you are saying about cat vaccinations. I'm so over the old veterinary philosophy that cats and dogs should get whatever vaccines are available. Vaccinating has to involve making educated decisions about the risks and benefits. Also, I have been a part-time vegetarian for many years. This mostly started after visiting some slaughterhouses, farms, and other food animal operations in school. I was completely shocked that veterinarians, the people who are charged to look after animal welfare, would sit by and allow inhumane, crowded, sterile living conditions. I started listening to your podcast a couple weeks ago, and that made me realize that being a vegetarian really is all or nothing. So many of your podcasts provided me with the information and support I needed to be independent. In this part of the country, Georgia, no restaurant outing or family get-together is complete without, a large, without large amounts of fried, grilled, or barbecue barbecued meat, so it's been hard to stick to my guns. Listening to your podcast really helps with encouragement, knowledge, cooking ideas, and nutrition. My wife has even begun to take meat out of her diet. Your podcast rocks. This is from Susan. 
What a week it has been. I wrote to you last week because my 10-year-old daughter was expressing interest in being vegetarian and has been asking me questions I did not know how to answer. In an attempt to educate myself so that I could help her find her own voice, I started listening to your podcast. I think I've listened to nearly every single one on iTunes and I have been eating completely vegan for a week now. Neither my beliefs nor my feelings are clear on the issue right now. All I know is that I don't want to put any animals in my mouth. I'm most struck by the arbitrariness of the distinction between animals we eat and animals we love. Every time I think of eating meat, I think of my dog. Every time I think of drinking milk, I think of my cat. I deliberately have not allowed myself to become educated on animal slaughter because I'm not sure I could bear hearing about it. What my imagination has conjured up is plenty. In the past, at the suggestion of a vegan nutritionist, I made an attempt at veganism, but I simply felt crummy. I'm a marathon runner, and I clearly was not taking in enough carbs or protein to sustain me and repair my muscles. I just ate a lot of veggies. After listening to your podcast, I've begun including more whole grains and legumes, and I feel as strong as ever during my runs. Another interesting effect is that I'm not having my usual afternoon bout of grumpiness. Go figure. We live in Houston, where my kids go to the private school, we belong to the country club, and we live in what is considered to be the wealthy part of town. I tell you this only so that you can envision the culture I live in. The women make food choices, if they eat at all, based on what will make them the slimmest and therefore the most beautiful. I have never had a weight problem, so I'm not as consumed by the calorie counting as some. However, the thought of making food choices that are based on a much deeper set of values is so liberating. This is from Amber. Are you guys still hanging in with me here? Uh, this is from Amber. I just wanted to write and tell you how much your podcast has meant to me in the past few months. I struggled with obesity through my late teens and early 20s. Early 2006, I decided I was over it and I needed to do something about my health. I've lost over 60 pounds now. And though I still have a long way to go, I have a newfound interest in healthy eating and an active lifestyle. As part of that journey, I had started being a more conscientious shopper, buying only organic, cruelty-free, free-range, and local meats, dairy, and eggs. I felt like I was making a choice that was good for the environment, the animals, and myself. This May, I started doing more research about veganism. I don't really know what sparked it except the quest for more knowledge. My newfound interest in healthy eating as well as my newly awakened passion for the environment and lessening my impact on the world really started making me question things which I had always taken for granted. I came across your podcast and I can't tell you enough how much it has helped me and was ultimately the reason I decided to become vegan. I devoured all your back episodes. Your compassionate, articulate, and passionate information has inspired me in so many ways. I feel like I am very justified in my choice to be vegan and I've never felt better physically or psychologically. I love to cook and veganism has also opened up many possibilities I never even considered as an omnivore. It's sped up my weight loss as well, which is also a plus. I just wanted to thank you again for all the work you're doing. It might sound cheesy, but I wouldn't be where I am today without you or the passion you put into your work. So thank you on my behalf, as well as the countless animals you've saved through your efforts. I've been enjoying your Compassionate Cooks podcast. I became vegan five years ago because of health reasons and also because I started to not like the taste of animal products. But it wasn't until I came across your podcast that I started to think about the suffering of farm animals and animals in general. Wow, you opened my eyes. I don't know why it took me so long to make the connection, but I'm glad I finally did. This is from Jeff. Jeff wrote, thank you for your podcast and for doing what you do to inspire, educate, and motivate others. I've been listening since early this year, and I have been meat-free for the past two months. The first six months or so, my wife and I were on and off meat eaters, but since moving away from my family, we found it much easier to completely change our habits. We had a discussion the other night about what more we could do and would like to try more of a vegan lifestyle. I can't thank you enough. This one's from Amanda, and I just want to just quickly say that Amanda has become a volunteer for Compassionate Cooks, and she's been managing the Amazon store, which has been so helpful to me, and she's doing some other things as well. So this is, a, I love this email from Amanda. As I've listened to your podcast, I've strongly identified with many of the points voiced by other listeners, and like them, I have a story. Since you play an important role in it, I'd like to share it with you. 
I moved to a vegetarian lifestyle some six weeks ago. September 9th, 2007 is the exact date. After what I had come to think of as a road to Damascus moment during what had been an otherwise mundane day. My husband, Jeff, and I were in a large bookstore near our hometown, whiling away a lazy Sunday afternoon over coffee and a heap of books. We are both avid cooks, eaters, and readers, and often combine these pleasures by reading about food and cooking. Since I have recently become interested in losing some weight, I was flicking idly through a new and by all appearances popular book, Skinny Bitch, to pick up some tips and perhaps learn some new habits. Suffice to say that I got more than I bargained for. The authors, both vegan, spend a chapter lifting the veil on the hellish world of the slaughterhouse. One after another after another. They quote workers describing the torture they routinely and seemingly recreationally inflict on the animals we pay to have on our dinner plates. The profound horror of these accounts left me literally unable to breathe. For me, the world stopped spinning, the air was sucked away, and I was confronted by my own complicity and by the absolute certainty that I could no longer support such brutality. Sitting in the bookstore cafe, surrounded by strangers, I wept, and even when my tears subsided, was too profoundly distressed and haunted to be able to drive home. Since that day, I have also been unable to eat the flesh of one more animal. Within my first week, I stumbled upon your podcast on iTunes, and this discovery helped in two crucial ways. First, your work corroborated what I had read initially and tried desperately to believe to be an exaggeration. And second, you showed me a sane route out of the horror. Since listening to that first episode, I have drawn immense daily strength and comfort from your words, and they are my primary source of consolation, information, and inspiration. To the soundtrack of your gentle, thoughtful, and above all, compassionate words, I have become vegan. My life is changing, and although the catalyst was elsewhere, it is your work which has been my main support and inspiration. Before we met, living on opposite sides of the country, I felt a connection to you which came out of the respect and appreciation I have for your amazing efforts and attitude. Meeting you in person last weekend shored up my impression of you as a truly generous, committed, and effective advocate for the voiceless. Please know that your values and your dedication are touching lives in extremely powerful ways. This is from Angela. My name is Angela. I'm a 22-year-old graduate student, and I've just turned vegan. The past year, I totally revamped my diet, which consisted of, honestly, mostly meat and pasta. Since then, I have switched to eating lots more veggies in order to lose some weight. I was only about 10 pounds overweight, but on my small frame, I did not feel healthy. And also to help with my low active thyroid problems. I recently read this book called Skinny Bitch. I honestly got the book because it looked like it was going to be a humorous book on what to do and what not to do in order to look good. The book, however, turned into something much more than that. It turns out that the authors are vegan and they explained the corrupt meat and dairy industry. It really opened my eyes. I finished the book in one sitting and instantly decided to change my ways. It has not been so difficult since I changed over to eating lots of veggies and little meat in the past year, so I've lost my craving and desire for meat. The dairy part might be difficult, but it has been a few days and I've been doing great. Putting me aside, I wanted to thank you very much for your podcast. I bumped into it as I searched for vegan sites to support my newly adopted lifestyle, and I have absolutely loved it. You have a very calming, direct voice that I greatly appreciate. Your podcasts make me feel supported as I come from an Armenian family and consider meat as the primary ingredient in all meals. It makes me feel sick now just thinking about it, but they do not support veganism whatsoever, and thus I haven't told them about my decision. I also feel extremely educated on all the myths and concepts of being vegan, which allows for me to be more confident in my choice. Lastly, I feel very empowered. I often wonder what I could do to make a change in the world, and I realize now that by just cutting out a couple of things out of my diet, meat, dairy, and eggs, I am making a large difference. I'm saving lives. The thought of that makes me feel very good. So thank you very much. This is from Claire. I first decided to give up some meat, beef, and pork when I was 13 years old and remained an ovo-lacto-vegetarian until I went abroad my junior year of college. I was going to live with a host family in Santiago de Chile for six months, and I thought it would be easier on them and on myself to start eating fish, although I drew the line at other types of flesh. 
once I started eating fish again, I didn't stop for another year or so up until your podcast inspired me to become vegan in early September. I had always loved cheese and I mean loved cheese and I never thought I could or would remove it from my diet. I admit I was a bit defensive about it. I knew it was wrong, although I wouldn't allow myself to fully face the facts. I repressed all the concerns I had about the dairy and egg industry so that I could eat what I, what I wanted. Last spring, my partner Michael, who was also a pescatarian at the time, started toying with the idea of being vegan. I wouldn't even consider the idea. In fact, I wouldn't even talk with him about what he was thinking on the subject. Then in late August, we had an epiphanous road trip from Boston, Massachusetts to Portland, Oregon, our new home. Mike had downloaded episodes of your podcast and all of a sudden you were saying things and reading other people's words from emails that just made so much sense. It seemed as if these thoughts and ideas had been inside me all along and I just couldn't hear them. In a matter of days, long car bound days full of your podcast and endless discussions on veganism, Mike and I decided to give up flesh and animal secretions altogether, and we haven't looked back since. Once I allowed myself to learn the truth about these industries and the experiences of the animals, giving up these products has been easy and one of the best things I have ever done. Your podcast continues to inspire and inform me and helps me stay a joyful vegan. I've had a paradigm shift in the way I think about food, animals, and myself, and I have you to thank for it. Thank you. Sanguination, the exsanguination, and the brutality I have come across on my way. Your crusade is a kind of hope that I didn't have the day before I listened to your podcast or visited your website. I just hope that you're stronger than I and that you never give up believing that there's a resolve to any. This is from Kate. I'm adding to the legions of inspired people who reach out to you to say thanks because I must. I am a long, long way from reformation, but I feel like I'm on the cusp of some sort of awakening, suddenly confronted by what's on my plate, suddenly just grossed out. Today, having listened to you one after the other while breastfeeding at 3 a.m., thank you, iPod, I'm feeling quite lit up. I'm still trying to figure out what my motives are for leaving meat behind. I gave birth to twin boys six months ago, three months too soon. One of them is still with us and thriving, and the other lived for six weeks. Losing a child was the most spiritual, most gut-wrenching experience of my life, and since then I am overcome with a desire to purify, to stop taking life and health for granted. So here I am, small steps. You're one wise woman, a prophet indeed. I feel almost fraudulent being among your listeners, still unsure of my own capacity for vegetarianism, feeling intimidated by needing to learn how to shop and pantry stock and cook in a totally new way, but thankful to have you as a guide. This is from Troy. I discovered and started listening to your podcast this past weekend. I spent most of Saturday and Sunday inside, listening, thinking, and ordering books, some food and pantry basics to get me started on my journey. There is so much I want to say, but this is not the first time I have tried to change my diet and lifestyle, so I'll refrain from declaring that I am animal product free until I have persevered and truly made it this time. I will say that your words and your passion for what you believe in have inspired me like nothing has inspired me ever before in my 30 years on this planet, and I am feeling very optimistic about making these changes. I have you to thank for that, so a huge thank you. I am a Canadian living and working in Japan, not the easiest place to avoid animal products. I teach children, and listening to your podcast has also resulted in so many thoughts running through my mind about the desensitizing of children, violence, etc. I have a lot more listening, learning, and thinking to do, and I hope to start expressing my thoughts on my blog, so I will definitely spread the word about your podcast and Compassionate Cook. So thank you again. I am looking forward to the next half of the podcast, and I will let you know how things go. This is from Nell. I have purchased your book and listened to your podcast. You inspired me to eat healthier and opened my eyes to the suffering that isn't readily visible in the food I have been eating. Thank you for making me aware. Normally, I am a reserved, quiet sort of person that lets people think and do as they please with very little outward expression of my feelings about it. Mainly, this is due to an avoidance of conflict. Your podcast is teaching me how to be true to my beliefs, which is something I have not done before. 
You are also teaching me how to discuss something I feel strongly about without getting emotional, but instead simply stating the facts in a non-judgmental way. Thank you for all that you do. It really makes a difference. I am the only one reading and listening to your info in my family, but I see changes and interest in my husband and daughter, and most likely my son will catch on in the future too. This is from Chelsea. I have been meaning to write to you for some time now, but I always manage to find excuses that prevent me from biting the bullet, partly because I have quite a standard to live up to, given the eloquence of the letters of your other readers. You all do such a great job. What are you talking about? You all sound eloquent. It's just ridiculous. But I'm finally writing to you. One better, even I'm sponsoring a podcast to honor this holiday season. I am a 16-year-old sophomore at the School for Creative and Performing Arts in Cincinnati, Ohio, and have been vegetarian for a year and a half now. I've been listening to your podcast for nearly the same amount of time. As so many other listeners have said, your words and wisdom give me the strength to continue on my path despite the occasional difficult patch or a bit of diversity or bit of diversity with the people in my life. I have gained so much from your personable yet passionate wisdom. I appreciate that you never claim to be perfect and do not expect that of your listeners. As other listeners have said, I eagerly await each update of your wonderful podcast. Your topics are always well informed and interesting and your literary selections are engaging and beautiful. I have learned that there are so many more reasons to be vegetarian or better yet vegan as I aspire to be than I originally perceived. This realization is largely due to your priceless efforts. Please keep up the good work. I'm afraid I have little else to say aside from thank you for sharing your wisdom, your strength, and your courage with me and all of your other listeners. And this is from Crystal. I've written letters to you in my head many times since I began listening to the podcast nearly a year ago, but never yet have I had the courage to actually convey those thoughts to you via email. So here goes. There's not much I can say that I'm sure you haven't already heard from the droves of listeners whom you have inspired, but I feel compelled to add my voice to that growing community. I began listening as a vegetarian, looking for a rational voice amid a sea of what seemed to me at the time to be predominantly emotional appeals for the humane treatment of and the non-eating of animals. When I look back, I see how slanted my Cartesian outlook was, mostly thanks to you. As a former subscriber of the anthropocentric worldview so intrinsic in our culture, I can't imagine another voice ever affecting me as deeply as yours. You were the first person I encountered who approached the issues from such a clear, well-reasoned standpoint, a position which finally allowed me to fully devote myself to the cause of animal rights. I say allowed because, as a philosophy major and someone who prides herself on objective thinking, I could never reconcile my love of animals, which I viewed as a remnant of my childhood naivete, and my desire to do what was best for my body and my health. When I look back now at the misconceptions I had harbored for the vegetarian vegan lifestyle, it's humbling to remember that I thought of myself as logical. Now your podcast is the first place I send people when they have questions or doubts about veganism. Though I feel empowered and truly informed by you to answer with conviction and openness, I'm sure I could never say it as eloquently. I doubt that. There have been times when I've had the opportunity to engage in dialogue about veganism with vegans and non-vegans alike, and I know that the quality of the conversation is always due to keeping your tips about relating to non-vegetarians in mind. You've inspired me in such a profound change in my worldview, and now that I'm totally vegan and becoming more and more active in the animal rights community, my convictions have never been stronger. Largely as a result of your podcast, I devoted a full semester of school to the study of activism, sustainability, and the suffering of both humans and non-human animals, utilizing many of the books you've suggested in the podcast episodes. Now that I'm approaching my senior project, I've decided to fulfill the requirement by creating a podcast modeled after yours. I just wanted you to know how deeply you've affected and inspired me. You've even encouraged me to become something of an amateur cook. I hope we get the chance to meet in person, though I'm sure if I do, I'll be falling all over myself. You guys are ridiculous. I'm just like you. That's just so silly. Anyway, thank you for everything you do to educate people and relieve the suffering of animals. You are the ultimate role model for a young vegan woman still in the midst of developing her identity. So I hope you're still there. Your letters are just so incredible. And, and as I said, the diversity of the listeners, I think, is is really remarkable. I mean, just everybody from all different backgrounds and ages, it's just, it's so remarkable. And I'm so 
I'm so thrilled that that the podcast is touching people on so many different levels. I love hearing that people come to it for health reasons and then gain a deeper consciousness around the animal issues. I love hearing that people come to it for animal issues, but then gain a deeper understanding of the health benefits and, and doing what they need to do to stay really healthy. I, I just, I think it's all so incredible. And I look forward to spending many more years together and to sharing many more hopeful stories with you. Just promise me that if you ever lose hope, you will think of the voices from today's episode. I believe that we create what we dwell upon, and I encourage you to dwell upon the hope that really does exist. Each and every person we encounter is an opportunity to communicate our truth, to speak for the animals, and to plant seeds. If you don't do it, then who will? With gratitude and humility and on behalf of the animals, this is Colleen with Compassionate Cooks. Thanks for listening for these past two years, and may you continue to find community and hope and inspiration in this podcast. Thank you for making it possible. Mm-hmm.